Welcome back to another episode of The Word on the Street Is with Michael and Gabby, where we mention it all about your favorite Bravo celebrities and the shows that they star in. Yeah, we have our inaugural guest, first guest on for his second time, Christopher, and he's our second two-time guest. So if you want to just kind of reintroduce yourself. Well, I am back by popular demand, of course. (laughs) I'm here to just spill the tea with the two most professional podcasters I know. (laughs) Oh, you're too kind. Well, I would like to add um, that I recently got to meet Christopher in real life. Um, After we met him the first time he was on the podcast, we had such a great time. And I learned that he lives in Los Angeles, not too far from me. So we had an iconic dinner at the one and only quiet woman from Orange County you know, the iconic throwing of the plates. This isn't my plate, read between these lines. So it was really fun to go there. We did outdoor dining and uh, it was super fun to get to meet Christopher in real life. It was definitely a pleasure. I had so much fun. Um, We did miss out on Dr. Dubrow and Heather. Um, Unfortunately, they were coming the next day, but uh, we had a great time and it was all fun. And no one kept on saying, keep eating, except we were keep eating the bread, so. There was and that. the cheese, the bread and <laughs> yes. the cheese. Yeah, oh Lord. <laughs> I was definitely having some FOMO over here in Michigan, but. We missed you terribly. Yeah. We missed you so much. We wish you were there. Next time. Next time for sure. Yeah, for sure. So now we are going to get into some recent Bravo news. The Bravo news has definitely been flowing the past few days, hours even. Oh, the Bravo news has been pretty insane the past couple of days. So we definitely wanted to touch on it. The first thing we wanted to talk about was Brandy Redman from Dallas, her husband, a cheating rumor or a cheating video came out and he was like openly kissing another woman in the club or a bar or whatever. I did hear it was from 2018, but nonetheless, it's sketchy and I always got a sketchy vibe from him. So Uh, I'm going to sound really rude here. So forgive me, but he's not cute. I've told Michael this. I think he probably is the least attractive housewife husband on top of that. He doesn't even have like, like a cute personality to make him look better. Like he has the personality of a wood chip on top of being not cute. Yep. I completely agree. He's always like, uh, whenever he talks to Brandy. Yeah, Yeah, there's no, like, it's like no emotion when he talks. Uh, Him in that video is the most emotion I've seen from him in in five seasons of Dallas. I saw more in that two-second video. Yeah, I agree. End rant. Mm. So now I'm curious because a couple weeks ago, she posted that kind of long cryptic message about things like kind of coming to an end and she loved sharing her life. Do you guys think that was about the show or do we think that's about her marriage now or is it about both? Go ahead, Christopher. I think to be quite honest, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. I think that post represented her walking away from the show to be more private since the show has brought her into the spotlight. Her, own actions have been brought into question many of a time and I think this season was very challenging for her because she had someone holding her accountable and then for information to come out like this that she probably was already aware of and just trying to keep it in the household I think she was ready to finally step away and I think yeah. They, I heard something that there are talks of a divorce already and that it's been bad for a very long time. So I wish her nothing but the best and my best interest is with the children. At the end of the day, yeah. they're going to be the most affected. If things Queen have Brooklyn. Been, I feel sad if things have been bad for such a long time. Why did they have another child? Yeah, that's, that's what makes I, me sad too. I personally think that maybe bringing another child into the world was their way of trying to rework their marriage. You know, sometimes a baby can revamp a whole family and bring people closer together. But the whole time he was on the show, I never saw him around once helping her out with the children. Where was he? 
in Vegas at a nightclub, apparently, with a <laughs> tattooed woman kissing her. Period. Okay. What, what, mm -hmm. what a scoundrel. But anyway, we are moving on to some very recent Bravo news that we just learned a couple of hours ago, and that is that Scott and Tinsley have broken off their 14th month engagement. Yeah, I mean, I'm super sad. I love Tinsley. Obviously, I named my dog Tinsley, so <laughs> I've always loved her. Um, I was really hoping this was her happy ending. You know, she's 40-something. She's wanted kids. I really thought this was going to be it for her. She left the show, but I'm kind of hoping that maybe we'll see her return. Obviously not the season that's about to air, but maybe the next season along with potentially Dorinda because there's drama there. I could see that. I mean, I was, I loved her and Leah's friendship and I would love to continue to watch them as friends. So that's just me being hopeful. Yeah, I would love to see Tinsley make a, a triumphant return to New York City. Um, I personally have never liked Scott um, ever since their first breakup. He just seemed really like sketchy after that. And I just didn't like the way he treated her. And then that whole debacle at, I think it was Bethany's apartment where she was like, dare Tinsley call your boyfriend. And that turned into like a huge disaster. They ended up breaking up like, that was just like a major red flag to me yeah I agree mm -hmm. and then I I feel like he always treated her like I don't know not really like a human being but like kind of like a trophy wife kind of thing yeah uh, I just I really was disgusted by the way he treated her and and then I was like oh god she's moving to Chicago with this guy like I really didn't think it was going to work out and I didn't want to be right but unfortunately I was yeah and she left the show halfway like I don't know it was just a bummer but a return would be super cool so I'm hopeful and the next bit of Bravo news we wanted to touch on is that we have another Vanderpump baby that has been born. Lala Kent has given birth to her daughter Ocean with her fiance, Randall Emmett. Uh, what are our thoughts on the name Ocean? Well, I don't really love the name, but I'm wondering because like she's a Pisces, so water, ocean, maybe that's how that came about I don't know but I'm not a huge fan of it <laughs> Christopher what do you think well it's certainly not Frank Ocean I can tell you that um <laughs> good good for Lauren from Utah let's give it up for Lauren for Utah for trying to be original next oh, question <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> that's right yes Lauren from Utah um so I think that now so as we know, Stassi gave birth to her daughter, Hartford. Do we like that name more than Ocean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it a little bit more. Um, Hartford's kind of growing on me. I don't hate I think it. Because right of now. Ocean? <laughs> yeah, maybe because it's so bad. And I can't imagine Britney's being better than either of them. So I'm, I can't wait to see what Britney and Jax's son is going to be named. Uh, I think they're going to be next. And then Sheena should be shortly yeah. after. Britney looks like she's about to pop like any day. So yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. She looks very ready to pop. Yeah. And then I think Sheena will be like maybe late April, May, something like that. What did we think of Sheena's um, maternity photos? Like the thousands of them that she posted of her in Hawaii with Brock. I liked them actually. I thought it was cute. I don't know. I'm like kind of a Shana stan right now. So I am too. Some of them were just a little like, really, that's pretty cheesy. And yeah. with the, the mass abundance of them, like there were so many. There were. <laughs> uh, is there anything else we wanted to cover before we head into Atlanta? No, I think we should get into Atlanta unless, wait, did Christopher want to talk about Married to Med first? Oh yeah, da da da. <laughs> so as we know, Married to Medicine is back for season eight. Um, there is a new wife in town. We get into her a little bit later in the second episode. Um, for all of you who want to know the new wife, um, you can certainly check out Married to Medicine. Um, I 
because she wasn't that prominent for me, so I don't exactly remember her name. <laughs> um, but she is she is a friend of Toya. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Toya's been on since the jump, um, and she is actually living next to Toya. They live in the same gated community, kind of massive home vibe that they can't afford, but, well, Toya can't afford, but I mean, you know. Her neighbor is uh, super rich. Her uh, husband is also a doctor. Um, he knows Dr. Eugene pretty well. Uh, Dr. Eugene and him are pretty good friends. Um, Heavenly threw Damon a birthday party. It was Damon's big 50th, um, and she likes to call him daddy. Uh, I don't know why, but we love Dr. Heavenly. Um, and the season kind of started out slow. So for those of you that are just jumping into Married to Medicine, um, I recommend starting in season seven. You kind of get like a background of where everyone's at. It's kind of where like the turning point happened within the friendships. Um, unfortunately, this season, it starts off slow. Contessa's back. She graduated school. She's doing her own thing. Her and Scott have seemed to have been on an okay start um, with their marriage and getting back to where they were. Um, Heavenly is doing her thing. Uh, Damon's actually using his center to help with the fight against COVID, which is just so amazing. Um, we see Doc, yeah, we see Dr. Jackie and Simone, um, they are on the outs again, unfortunately, um, which is super, super sad. I love Simone and Jackie together. Jackie's kind of like, if people want to compare her to Sheree, uh, but she's more of like the love and light version of Sheree. Okay. And Heavenly is like Phaedra. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this season on Married to Medicine, we won't be having our two favorites, Mariah and Quad. Um, unfortunately, Mariah has stepped away from the show and Quad has been replaced as a friend of. But we will get a few OGs. We have Lisa Nicole coming back, which is super exciting. And we also have Carrie. But that's pretty much it for Married to Medicine. It was a very slow start. It was about COVID, but I like how they're covering more of the social justice for Black Lives Matter, which is super amazing. Um, I like how on Sundays, it's Atlanta Sundays now, which is even better. I love strong, independent Black women, and I love Black women in medicine. So I think it's super great that Bravo decided to keep it at the same time. Nice. Well, thank yeah. you so much for that great rundown, Christopher. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Gabby and I really need to get on watching that, so. It's definitely um, something that I recommend people getting into. I think we need to definitely showcase the Black women that are in medicine. And yeah. we are fortunate enough this year to get a wife um, who brings more of a different cultural side too um, to the show, but you'll have to tune in to find out more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've seen the first season, so I, I think I definitely enjoyed that and will continue on, but there's just been so much content and it's almost like we have too many options. It's hard to choose one thing to watch. I know. Exactly. So now we are going to dive into this week's Atlanta episode, which was the wedding of the century that we all been waiting for 10 10 20 for Cynthia and Mike's wedding yeah I was kind of embarrassed for Cynthia because yeah. she I know that like she desperately wanted this wedding like showcase I think in her dream world this episode would have got her this wedding would have gotten an entire episode of just the wedding and everything going on and she even paid like for her own like people to film it just for this to be featured on maybe a quarter of the episode if that like it really wasn't even the main focus of the episode yeah so. like if she had waited till next year she could have had like a free episode special yeah I'm, like she's been around long enough on the housewives that people would totally watch that so i she definitely chose a date over her dream wedding because and sure. not to be rude but that place inside covert or not the ceremony looked crammed yeah and then on the dance floor people were dancing with like without masks and <laughs> I, I mean i get that she was i i definitely feel that she was trying her hardest to put precautions in place yeah. and did the most that she could but having 200 people 
no safety precaution is gonna make up for having 200 people at a wedding I mean if it was like maybe 50 people I could say okay maybe but 200 no yeah I all I could look at was just how crowded the ceremony was people were on top of each other it looked like yeah it it was not the most like glamorous housewife wedding we've seen probably one of the worst I mean I thought Leanne's was bad last year but I think this might take the cake I think Cynthia looked beautiful I think her dress was she showcased body for the people um yeah I thought she looked great too it was nice seeing Eva back for you know one episode I think Eva Eva the diva was there um she was there and proud now she was there I I I was she was definitely there um, she was there with that, you know, her smiles hmm. and the um, shade. I totally spotted her in the preview from the week prior that she was going to be in this episode. And I texted Michael about it and he like thought I was crazy. He's like, I didn't see her. In I didn't it. see her at all. I mean, I wasn't surprised because I knew they were friends, but. I didn't know that Eva and like Cynthia were close enough that Eva would be a bridesmaid. I didn't know they'd stayed that close. I always I thought it them being pretty close, but I don't know. I thought it was just for the cameras. I, I thought she, Eva was a great actress. You know, <laughs> give her an Oscar. <laughs> but that's how I feel. I mean, um, I mean, I call it as they see it. I mean, Eva the diva, I didn't know her and Cynthia knew each other. I know that Eva, you know, one top model. I know Cynthia was a model. What does that have in common? You guys cross paths, like how why would you keep why would you have someone that you've known for three years as a bridesmaid well like, it seems like why would you oh it's i'm like sorry common, sorry it seems like a common thing with housewives weddings like we saw when camille got married she had kyle as a bridesmaid which was really random and then i mean danielle had marge to re- and, and teresa her, and teresa i don't know I mean, well, I would have Marge at my wedding any day. I mean, well, yeah. And Tamara, <laughs> Tamara had Heather and Vicky in her wedding, and she even invited Gretchen. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like a, a show, like a camera thing, more than like, oh, I'm having my best friends here. It's like, oh well, yeah. if this is gonna be on the show, then I need to have these women in the wedding kind of thing. And production pays more for if you have more housewives they'll pay for more of your wedding because they want it prominently featured should we get into the little nieces party that shamia threw yes i lived for it i live for a nieces party now i do think Ah. it's weird that marlo and kenya are like friends now i it's strategic. It's clearly strategic it's by Kenya. To me. It I'm, seems it seems so so fake. I, it I seems. Usually, mm-hmm, for sure. I mean, uh, let's look at the facts. Marlo and Kenya were not friends. Marlo and Portia become like bosom buddies because they made up and they cool. And Marlo literally has been in Portia's life and Pilar's life for a while now. Kenya filming starts. Let's look at it that way. Oh, I missed you so much, Marlo. Okay, cool. We get it, Kenya. You want to give a good performance for Marlo. Marlo wants to forgive you because Marlo is a Monty now, which I love for Marlo. But Kenya knows that Marlo is friends with Portia. Kenya still hates Portia for everything that went down at the reunion last year. Yeah. Kenya uses Marlo as a pawn in Kenya's game to get to Portia's emotional side because Portia is alone and very fragile right now. Portia is a strong woman, but Portia is too worried about fighting for social justice to care about Kenya, which is what we like about Portia. Mm -hmm. But Portia is alone with Pilar. She has her family. She has Mother Diane. She has Lauren. But Portia confides in Marlo, and Marlo has been there for Portia yeah. And that's what we don't get to see on camera. And Kenya took a shot very, very low. Marlo is like Portia's sister now. Like, let, let's just look at that way. What Kenya did was strategic to hurt Portia because Kenya cannot let go of anything. Yet she let a man live in her house who verbally abused her. I'm not going to say if anything else happened because I'm not going to get sued by Kenya Moore. But 
He was verbally abusive and dismissive. She tolerates that, but she cannot let a grudge go. Yeah. That's all I have to say on Kenya Moore, because, I mean, she needs more work needed on her life and her personal issues and, you know, that hair care line that is definitely still water. And she can check Kenya that. Kenya Moore hair care. I oh, mean, okay. Kenya, yeah, Kenya Moore more work needed hair care because it's going to destroy your edges, not fix them. And as Gabby figured out, it's not cruelty free. Oh, I ha- and I wanted to follow up about that. I was looking on their website again, hoping I maybe missed it. So I sent an email asking if they could confirm like two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half, nothing. Oh, wow. So that sounds oh. like I will not be buying any Kenya Moore hair care because <laughs> I cannot confirm if it's cruelty free. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I mean, and Rena Beauty, which is cruelty free. That is cruelty which free. We- we love Rena Beauty. If you need actual care, get Rena Beauty. If you want to destroy your edges, get Kenya Moore hair care. <laughs> <laughs> and if you Stop don't care about cruel, if you don't care about cruelty free products, order Kenya Moore hair care. <laughs> I think yeah. Kenya's been shady with the whole Bolo stuff. You know, we're how many? You know, we've it's been how many episodes now, and we're still we're still on trying to find that, the investigation. Like, I would just like a female's perspective of this situation since Gary, since basically one of the producers, Gary, I think that was his name. He like demiked everybody. We're just gonna call him Gary. But I would like to know Gabby's opinion on this because you're about to be a bride to be. If you had a bachelor party, I'm not saying like this will go down, but how would you feel if someone started talking about it and consistently tried to find dirt on someone? Would you shut it down or would you be Cynthia and be passive on it the whole time since it was your bachelor edge party? Um, question. <laughs> that's a really great question. I actually <laughs> did have my bachelorette party, just not my wedding because my bachelorette party happened enough of advance of COVID the shutdown. Um, I still had it and nothing like what happened at Cynthia's bachelorette party happened at, in mine in, in Vegas. Um, but none of my friends would ever act like that, which is why they're my friends. Um, but if someone did do that, I probably would pull them aside and ask them to stop talking about it. So maybe like a, a healthy medium of passive, but also not wanting this kind of stuff circulating around my bachelorette party of people like getting overly nosy in people's business. I absolutely agree with you because yeah. if you're someone's friend, I mean, can you kind of destroy Cynthia's engagement now the bachelorette party? It's like, is there enough twirl time? Like, That was so messed up what she did the night that Mike proposed to Cynthia. Exactly. She's a terrible I, friend. I mean, but Cynthia allows it. So I guess Cynthia gets what she deserves. But do you think we, do you think Kenya doesn't know how to be a friend because yeah, she's all, because of the way she was brought up. I mean, I'm not going to come for you know her issues with her mom, but maybe she doesn't know how to be a friend because maybe growing up she was always so defensive because of that issue that's underlying. Yeah, and it's a shame she doesn't allow someone to be a friend to her. Therefore, she turns on everyone and tries to be a friend, but she can't. She won't open up. She closes everything off, and it's sad to see someone yeah, I- in pain. I think it's rooted from her childhood, but she do- yeah. she doesn't know how to be a friend. I doubt she has good girlfriends outside of the show even. It's a shame. And then we have Portia and Dennis having like a really um, intense conversation. And a side note, I guess she's not vegan anymore. She ordered short ribs. Thank God, I missed, I, I missed fun Portia. The vegan <laughs> Portia was not it. I miss, I miss fun Portia. Oh my gosh. She changes being a vegan as often as she showers. Like one minute she's like so into being vegan. The next she's like ordering short ribs. So yeah. Anyway, so Portia and Dennis, um, yeah, they, they're like only trying to make face because of PJ and Dennis just sounded like such a fool. And he's like, well, I don't really know why we broke up. It's like, are you kidding? You cheated on her. You fool. Yeah, I, I, I do not like him at all. I completely agree with Portia that if it weren't for PJ, they would have no relationship whatsoever. I think Dennis is honestly a great father to Pilar. I think their co-parenting is good. 
I just think Portia needs to move on and find someone that, yes, she has a child with this man, but Portia is a great mom. She is a great mom and no one can ever say otherwise. And she's given Pilar everything. I just hope, you know, she can find someone or maybe Dennis can get some work done to him. Not like plastic surgery, but on, on his emotional side, you know, I, I, I wish I really, I, I liked them together. I really did. I liked how, I liked their dynamic. I, I thought they were a beautiful couple. It's just what happened was there's a lot of temptation out there and Dennis got caught up in it and it hurt Portia because she does not know what love is anymore. She had a child with this man. When you do the things to make a child, that is not only an emotional and physical connection, but it is a bond because you yeah. now have a child. And what Dennis did was he severed half of that bond. Yeah, I never really liked Dennis that much. I always thought Portia was too good for him in every way, like personality-wise, looks-wise, everything. Uh, I thought Dennis was also kind of like Brian in the sense, just kind of like a bump on a log, like very boring personality. <laughs> um, and on top of that, just not cute. Um, so, and Portia is just so vibrant, full of life. Like she's a, a knockout. Like I think she's not only one of the most beautiful housewives, just one of the most beautiful people on the planet. I absolutely agree. I think her and Dennis made a beautiful child, but I think Portia deserves someone that will treat that child like their own. Yeah. Kind of how Michael Sterling and Marley, he treats Marley, Eva's daughter, as his own. And she yeah. needs to find a man that is capable of doing that. And I wish nothing but the best for her. Um, but I hope think, for her. Do we think um, Eva's relationship with her man, Michael, is genuine? Like, do you really think they're like, he worships her like that? I do. I, I, I see the way he looks at her. You can't fake those looks of love, even on camera. I, so I if, think. If that is completely authentic, then I want that for Portia. I don't Absolutely. want like someone who just pretends on camera to adore her. Um, I think Cynthia's man, Mike, is pretty authentic. He seems to adore Cynthia, but yeah. he's been married a couple other times. And just some of the stuff he was saying in front of his daughters made me a little uncomfortable. Um, Absolutely. So he could go a little way either way for me because sometimes he seems like a bad car salesman at times. Yeah, I get that vibe too. But I totally agree. Portia deserves a lot better than Dennis. And I hope she finds that. She will. She is totally gorgeous, successful. And it's funny because her neighborhood, she is so remotely close to all the housewives. So she has that great sisterhood support system. Like where she lives, she's close to Nini. Drew just moved into her neighborhood. So she has that sisterhood, which what about will be Kim good for her. What about Kim Z? Does she live close to Kim Zolciak? No, Kim Zolciak is not in that area code. <laughs> I heard, I mean, I've been told to take these with a grain of salt, but all the people who report on Instagram, their interactions and the tea they know on Bravo Lebs. And one of them said that living next to the Beermans is a nightmare. Like that the boys are super loud and they're always on their like little RVs and stuff. So now we are going to leave the Georgia Peaches and head over to our Dallas ladies um and what were our thoughts on this week's episode it was a pretty good episode I thought I mean we had yeah. the whole shaman party and then we had Tiffany's birthday which was pretty fun but also kind of hectic at the same time so I enjoyed this episode and what are our thoughts on Deandra's shaman I live for Deandra I think you know you need to do you I think Deandra is living her best life. Good for her. I will say as somebody who's never been a big Deandra fan, I am liking her more and more this season. I'm definitely sure. seeing, I'm seeing more of an authenticity to her that I haven't seen before. Yeah, I really like her this season too. I actually never really hated her. I, for the most part, have actually liked her. Um, but I think she's having a really good season right now. Yeah. Maybe because of sure. Deanne being gone, maybe because she's friends with Tiffany. I don't know, but I'm enjoying her. I think her being friends with Tiffany is the best thing to happen to that franchise. 
I think Tiffany Moon is somebody that we needed on Dallas for a very long time. I mean, she would be a perfect candidate for Married to Medicine Dallas if they were to ever bring that back, because yeah. that was a one. Um, but I, I like seeing more of Mama D. I think Deandra's bringing more of Mama D. I live for Mama D because she throws amazing shade. Yeah, Mama D. She's yeah. a shade assassin. I think she she probably called Mama Joyce because they probably were in cahoots of how to read some of these ladies on the show. Oh my gosh, I like Mama D so much more than Mama Joyce. I cannot stand Mama Joyce ever since we first met her in season two of Atlanta. All she does is sabotage every one of Candy's romantic relationships. It, it's weird. I, I don't like Mama Joyce. I mean, yeah, I think she's, she's mean. Funny, she's but... not a nice person. Yeah, I agree. But I've been loving seeing more mom, more of Mama D. Now, what did you guys think about basically D exposing why Deandra changed her name? Because I personally uh, probably think it's true. And honestly, if I was Deandra, I wouldn't be ashamed. Like I probably would have done that too. But I wouldn't like. I would be like, yeah, I would have owned it. Like. I changed my name. This is a big name in Dallas and I knew it was going to be beneficial for me. I don't think it's really anything to be that embarrassed about. So I don't, I don't either. I think yeah. you got to use whatever you can and it's benefited her. Yeah. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I don't get why she got so worked up about it. If it's not true, her reaction tells me it is true. And I yeah. agree with Michael, like I, I don't see what's so wrong with that. Like, or she could have just said like she wanted to like see him as her adopted father. I mean, she could have said anything. I mean, it's just not that big of a deal. She didn't I mean, even give a reason, like a different reason for it either. It also, I, mean, I also don't think it was Mama D's place to say. No. I think Deandra could have done it on her own accord. Yeah. But as someone who is adopted myself, I totally and completely understand the yeah. whole situation yeah. and good, good for Deandra. I think she'll own it more now that D has exposed it on national yeah. television, but yeah. I still stand by Deandra. I don't, I don't really think Mama D had a place to say it. I think Mama D might have slipped up because she's not probably used to having cameras there all the time. Mm. Yeah. I think Mama she probably, D just, yeah. she just, tells the truth and tells it like it is and doesn't really give a fuck so yeah yeah I live for her just reading and doing all them things good for mama d it she was read them bitches. Back. and she's almost 80 if not already 80 uh, I want to look like that when I'm 80 damn I mean some Wait. of the hair and stuff is a little much for me but I think <laughs> she looks good still it's very Dallas. It's very Dallas yeah. high society grandma, not grandma, well, grandmother. Oh, I mean, Mama D, what about it? Remember, yes. <laughs> remember when Deandra dressed up as her and it was like, yeah. that was one Deandra of Deandra my- was like, this had everything out. She's like, hey, she y'all. Like, over. Yeah. Well, that does was- D really, does D drink like that? I mean, no, I would really, no, I don't I think so. Mama D has one glass of wine. I was like, okay, I'm going to bed. This has been enough. Well, yeah. I thought like, cause Deandra obviously <laughs> was highly intoxicated, was having a full on meltdown. I thought it was kind of mean how D just left in the middle of that. Like my mom wouldn't do that if I was having a meltdown in front of everybody. She wouldn't just leave and be like, oh, yeah. she's just drunk. Cause that's what all D said. Yeah. And then she was like, oh Lordy, when she got in the car, like that's <laughs> what she said. Yeah. I mean, she's definitely she's not of a mom like definitely not mother of the year no but i think that tough love has built deandra the way she is now for sure well -hmm. what did we think about well this annoyed the hell out of me what we think about brandy (laughs) calling out deandra about um the whole shaman thing and how you know she's not following 
God and what I, I mean that oh, Lord Jesus crazy. God above I was like I did, I I really didn't see that one coming like why did she even <laughs> participate in the shaman exercise if it was so against the word of God and like I love how they played the whole reel of like her saying she can see the other side she sees ghosts like isn't that considered ungodly like she just is so contradictory and Whoa. I just it felt very preachy at Deandra and I did not like it one bit I think Brandy Redman is the last person to preach to anybody I mean that's Brandy Redman she mm -hmm. literally I mean when you know you're you're trying to set an example for your children who will watch this show when they get older how are you going to preach yes, at someone? Man. Girl, worry about your husband and him stepping out on you. Don't be worried about Deandra, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, go worry about your fake friendship with Stephanie, too. Like, that's a whole other can of worms. They're too codependent. It's like freaking frack have gone awry. But I... <laughs> boring. I, it's not even the fun, tasteful freaking frack. It's like throwing sea salt on something. It does nothing. Yeah. But uh, Brandy I mean, should not be preaching. At all. Yeah, yeah, and I liked Brandy early on because she was the one that like was so carefree and fun and wasn't <clears throat> like Dallas society and all like uppity. And now, why all of a sudden is she like so judgy? And I mean, she is just the last person to act like that. So I mean, when you get drunk at two o'clock in the afternoon with, and then go to a Dallas high society event and act like an asshole for lack of a better word, an asshole. I mean, you should be the last person preaching to Deandra. And also she, I mean, after her, you know, little video that she did, that's pretty ungodly. I mean, the Bible says love your, thy neighbor, doesn't it? That wasn't love. So why is she talking about God? Don't use a religion to justify your actions. That is yes. not a thing. Yeah. Please stop that. doing it. It's not a thing. If your religion makes you have to justify things, get a different religion or don't practice, <laughs> yeah. okay? I couldn't Preach. agree more. Well, yeah. I'm kind of over talking about these Dallas ladies. Ladies, I mean, the Brandy. Brandy left a bad taste in my mouth with how she behaved at that dinner. Yeah, she needs to go. I'm completely done with her. Honestly, after the OC ladies, she's probably my next least favorite. Like, I really hate mm -hmm. her now. So yeah. Well, I think we need to get into Jersey because this is way better. Yes, yes. Speaking of more women behaving badly and getting drunk, we had we had a plenty, um, we had a heavy dose of that in Jersey this week at Teresa's pool party. Yeah, I was living for drunk Jennifer. I mean, I think we've all been there. When I mix tequila with all this stuff, I've ended like that quite a few times so I've actually been worse than Jennifer I used to go out on West Hollywood before I was 23 a 22 year old Chris used to go out all the time in West Hollywood and um get audioses you know that drink oh I, I know what audio what and, maps are yeah and um I used to drink about five of those in one night oh my consecutively. god consecutively um so I've been where Jennifer has been all I can tell her is it gets better um yeah. you need to stop mixing tequila with everything because tequila is great on its own when you mix it with other things it's when it goes south or very quickly yeah that's when things get really dangerous yeah. so i'm just really over like the david and dolores drama i've said it before i think dolores is too good for him and the storyline for dolores has never changed of her having an odd living situation like lives with her ex-husband david's building a house she wants a commitment yada 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 we've just we've heard the same thing since season 11 and i'm just it's getting kind of old for me i agree um it's i mean dolores doesn't have much else going on to be quite frank i think i like her as a person to be quite frank uh <laughs> What is this literacy like, that you are saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Grandpa. Yes, Grandpa Michael. We live for you. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> give a different word. To be honest, I think that Dolores doesn't have really anything going on. I think I, you know, I think she's fine as a person, but I think she's quite boring. I keep her over Melissa, but um, <laughs> I don't over Jackie. Like, yeah, oh yeah, big yeah. time. But I just, it's been the same storyline, the David and Frank stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean, I 
actually kind of like David. I just think he's kind of awkward in front of the camera and I don't really think he likes to be filmed, but I actually like David. I don't know. I'm in the minority there. But well, too bad. He shouldn't be dating a famous reality TV star. Like she, I think they started dating, like they started dating after she was already on the show, right? Yeah, they did. It? Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Uh, ho hum. I don't really feel bad for him at all. Well, ho hum. I never heard that before. <laughs> Do you think I, so? I know, like, th- ho hum. I don't. <laughs> What is that, honey? What is yeah. this, honey? A white refrigerator, honey? Oh, it's, like, it's like somebody complaining about the Oof. same old thing, like ho hum, you know? <laughs> is that like a sailor thing? Like now, I just think about going out on St. Patrick's Day and like you know singing some good old Irish bar music with ho hum. It sounds like a sailor song. Oh my yeah, god, that. that is so funny. I wasn't really. I don't know. I feel like that's something my parents would say. That's probably where I picked it up from. <laughs> Uh, um, I understand what you're saying yeah um, do you yeah. think though D- Dolores' situation is based on the fact that she's afraid to be alone because she's never been alone in her life because she's always had a man t- even though Frank stepped out she's always had a man take care of her and she's afraid to lose David because David is a good boyfriend probably off camera but I think once the camera's on maybe it affects him differently because he doesn't want to be carefree David I think off camera he's carefree David I think on camera, since he is a doctor and he's representing a hospital, because they always do the hospital placement logo, because he always wears a hospital thing, because, you know, free advertising on Bravo. I mean, we've seen Housewives do it. We see Mauricio do it all the time. Oh, my well, God. It, it always, and Kyle, too, oh, always has uh, an agency. Let, let me get an agency Melissa. hat real quick. Melissa but, does it the most. When Joe was going away, she was wearing her fucking Envy hat. That still pisses me off. The fucking envy. Everything's envy. Like, oh my God. I'm Melissa Gorga and all I talk about is envy. Hold on, let me take a selfie. I'm Melissa Gorga. I'm so famous. I'm so fabulous. I'm so pretty. But no, like, honestly, I think Dolores' problem is she's never used to being Dolores. She's always used to being Dolores plus a man. Yeah. And I think that comes from her mom and dad's situation. Her mom doesn't live with her dad. Her dad lives alone, but they're still married and they still have dinner together and still do that. She's used to doing that with Frank. I think ideally her and Frank should be together because they have been together for years. Does the relationship work? No, because Frank walked out on Dolores. But Frank lives in Dolores' house. Dolores deserves a man like Frank because Frank would treat Dolores with respect. David, in front of the cameras, we don't see David off camera. He might be a fun off camera person, but on camera, he's a dick to say the least, telling her what she can and cannot do to her body. She wants to go get a boob job, a butt lift, whatever she wants to do to look cute for him. Not that a woman needs to look cute for a man because that is not what I'm saying. What yeah. I'm saying is she can, it's her body. She wants to go get a boob job, cool. She wants to go get butt implants, let her. Because Dolores, honestly, if I was straight, Dolores is an A plus girl and I wish her nothing but the best. But yeah. David, David ain't it, telling her that she can't do things to herself. Is he paying for it? No, he is not. She's paying for it on her own. Unless he's writing the check, he needs to keep his mouth quiet because I'm pretty sure he likes Dolores as Dolores. Yeah, he was- I agree with that part, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I just wanted to say one other thing. Um, Jackie not coming on another like cast event for a second episode in a row now is just like proves we don't need her. Yeah. She brought to the show nothing like we can still have amazing cast trips and pool parties and stuff without jackie no problem how as a lawyer do you say something so stupid that's like that's like how how does that how do you talk about someone's shot it was between you and Teresa and evan it was not not between gia Teresa. like i don't care if Teresa was wrong Teresa was wrong for saying what she said i love Teresa, but you don't say that at someone's yeah. birthday party, but you don't bring someone's child. The child is not part of the show. She is not Brooks Marks. She does not have a confessional as many housewives as Brooks Marks does. Okay. Yeah. So don't bring the child into it. When Jackie did was wrong, yeah. we do not need her. She's insignificant. I yeah. don't remember one memorable thing she has done. She's a fan. She brought literally her kids to meet Teresa. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, play devil's advocate because I think mm-hmm. that um, one, Gia even understood that her mom probably caused this drama and that she should apologize. So I think if Gia could be immature about it, so can Teresa. 
Um, two, I don't think Jackie's actually that bad. I mean, no one else is, everyone else is afraid of Teresa and Jackie's really the only one that will like stick up to her. So for that, I give Jackie kudos. So she's my favorite, no. Also, Jennifer's a fan. If you've seen like clips before, Jennifer was at the posh fashion show and I'm 100% sure that Jennifer watched the show before and knew to suck up to Teresa. I love Jennifer, but she's also a fan. So we just she's, have to call it like at, it is. At least Jennifer's admitted it in one of her confessionals. She was like, yeah, when Teresa was getting mad, you think I'm going to say something? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, like, honest and I love Jennifer, but she was also a fan too, so. Totally. I honestly think though, Jackie just doesn't care because Jackie's calculated. She is very smart. I'm not going to comfort her and her intelligence because she is super smart. Yeah. But what I think it, it is, is the women don't want to deal with Teresa because Teresa, when she's angry, and no one's afraid of her. She's not going to hurt you. She's just annoying with her anger. It's not necessarily a fear. It's like, oh my God, she's angry again. Like, yeah. But I have a lot of power and they know that she holds grudges. So they just don't want to deal with it. But at the end of the day, she is Andy's favorite. And Andy doesn't hold, Andy does not hold her to a higher standard at, at all. Andy loves well, it because it's great TV. Like, but I mean, at the end of the day, it isn't Andy's show. It's a production company show. The production company sold it to Bravo. Bravo doesn't own the show technically. It's the production company that films. Have you noticed that it's always like evolution or yeah. silent sirens? It's not necessarily NBC Bravo. It's always a production company. It's that, that producer, that production company is like, okay, like Teresa's gone. Like I'm over this. I can't work with her. She has no power. At the end of the day, the girls aren't afraid of her having power over the show. They're afraid of dealing with the repercussions of Teresa being angry and holding a grudge because she's a five-year-old that can't play in a sandbox appropriately. Yeah. Wow. Um, was there anything else we wanted to cover for Jersey before we do our conclusion? I was just going to say, I think that whole Michelle and Melissa stuff is like oh, yeah. so first. I mean, Joe and her, I don't even remember Michelle's husband's name. John. John. Yeah. John, you would know, right, Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> and he spelled it, he spelled it the same way as my John too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I didn't but understand the whole thing. Like I was, was very wrong. confused. It was very forced. Obviously, I mean, Michelle was put up to probably talk about it. And obviously, it wasn't that big of a deal if they talked it out in like five minutes. So I just thought do you it think was. Do you think Teresa set that whole thing up? Just no, I, know, I think production her. set it up, honestly. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think uh, Michelle, Michelle. I don't really production. like Michelle. There's something about her that kind of bugged. Something about her face bugs me, and I know that's like rude to say, but there's something weird about her face, and I really can't. <laughs> Is she going to be like a permanent friend of the show, do you think? Or do we think she's going to be there for a little bit with Teresa think, in the house? I think she was just put on there because she's Teresa's realtor, and she could dig up this drama with Joe Gorga, and I think that's about it, honestly. I don't think yeah. she's interesting. Even if she's the number one realtor in New Jersey, She's not doing it for me. Oh, so. please. I, I've, ne I've never seen her as number one realtor. That's funny because I'm from the East Coast nope. and I own a, and I own a home in Jersey. So, I mean, you own, I mean, a, home, I, you own a home in Jersey. My family owns a home in Jersey in Avalon. I, if she was a number one realtor, I would sure as hell want her to find me a home in Avalon. Like if she was a number one realtor, I would have known her name before she was even on the show because I'm studying real estate right now. So like, yeah. I look up like Josh yes. Altman. Yeah, like Me I'm getting too. real estate. Me oh my too. God, you're getting a real estate license? I've been I've been studying to take my test, yeah. Oh my God, me and you, we're gonna be selling Sunset Girl. That's <laughs> literally the tea. And then we're gonna have Michael come join us and we'll just take down Josh well, Altman and Mauricio. We'll be the well, agency, how about that? <laughs> my boyfriend's a realtor, so I can just be like married to med. I yes <laughs> oh my married god to real estate <laughs> yeah married to real bravo that's the t sign yes. us i'll just be miss quad as the friend of the married to real yep. estate you know because you know i'm the single one in this piece but um <laughs> but honestly she i saw before the season aired that they were going to cast her if anybody called that t michelle mm. they were going to cast her Mm -hmm. And then I guess whatever production was like, they cut her out. Kind of like how Mary Cosby was like casted as 
a housewife, but then they demoted her, but um, didn't officially as a friend of. Yeah. So I feel like this, we're, we're going to see Michelle like one more time. I, I know we will one or two more times, but it's done. It was very set up. Like, yeah. Yeah. It very. was, it was worse than Joe Judice's meltdown at his going away party with the guy out in the street saying, I'm with the mob. Like, that was a setup. Yeah. It's like, this this season does. I mean, I'm enjoying the season, but it is feeling a little bit forced with like yeah. the Jackie and Teresa stuff yeah. felt forced, and now this feels forced. Yeah. It's just a but shame. I think we're getting to something next week because now after this forced drama, it's creating real drama because. We see next week Jennifer brings up that uh, Marge's husband uh, well, talked about the uh, cheating rumor with the guys. So then Jennifer brought it up and then her and Marge are fighting, which I love that feud. I love both of them, but I live for that feud. So mm -hmm. happy to see that. And then Jackie's going to be around next week. So obviously we're going to have some drama there. So I think like, okay, it's been kind of weird, but I think we're kind of getting to something now. So. I think all the franchises though, as we can agree, have had such a slow start and a slow build up. Yeah. I think it has a lot to do with COVID. I will say Jersey though has been far by the worst when it comes to their cast and their COVID precautions. A hundred and ten percent. Yeah, it doesn't even feel like COVID. It's like right, like Jackie's <laughs> event. Like I was so confused. Like I get like Jersey's different, but Okay, Teresa, like, putting the mask over her, like, this, like, walking in a restaurant. If I were to do that in West Hollywood, I would get, like, kicked out of a restaurant. I would literally be asked yeah. to leave. And like, then Teresa's pool party. Yeah, why are you having a pool party on pandemic? Like, I'm surprised production even allowed that. Because the, bartender I know the, had, the bartender was the only person wearing a mask. I mean, if it was, like, the girls and their husbands, that would be fine, I think. But right. it's, like... But a lot of other Jersey, people too yeah it's been i think that's what's bothered me about the whole jersey season is seeing them all partying still i get it it was filmed months ago but when we look at it those restrictions yeah. that were in place were there for a reason i'm pretty yeah. sure in new jersey you aren't supposed to have like 25 people at your home like what about like i hate to say it but didn't Teresa's dad die during like covid too like no. just before no, he died he before, right? Yeah, he died before COVID. Yeah. I'm just saying like she should take that into consideration of, of everyone else. That, like I'm, she's Melissa's not, mom she's not, isn't. She's not deep enough for that. She's no. not mentally compatible enough for emotion. Yeah, she's, she's not just she's about not Teresa. Mentally, she's not a mentally or emotionally deep person. I think except when it comes to her daughters, that's maybe as about as deep as she can go. But yeah, that's, about, I don't, that's it. Yeah, I mean, she needs to worry about her daughters and her fake fashions because she's always. Oh. You know, she's I mean, the fake. a notorious knockoff wearer. Yeah, I love that for her. But girl, don't make it obvious. Buy like at least one fake Cartier. Don't buy five and try and clean it. Oh, I saw. So bad. I saw a post today, and it was like pictures of Teresa, and I think I sent this to Gabby, and it was like if this was Giselle the internet would be like tearing her down right now, but, but it was, I, so it was fine. But like Giselle, to, they would rip Giselle apart for anything she wears. And like, I'm not saying all of her stuff is great, but. I hate to say it though, but if we look at it and I hate to make this segue, but I don't like how we hold, and I'm gonna say it, black women to a higher standard than any other franchise. Have we noticed? Portia's fight with Kenya. We don't condone violence at Bravo. Every time it involves a black, strong black woman, Andy has a thing. And I hate to make this segue, but it needs to be segued. Bravo holds black women to a higher standard and women of color to a higher standard than any other franchise. To yeah. Literally Danielle dragging Margaret, getting physically physical, which honestly looked painful to Margaret. Andy did not want to say we do not condone physical violence, but he'll say it to Atlanta, to Potomac, to any other franchise that I, I it's, it's bothers me. We can cut it that's, at that part. Yeah, but that's like a, I had, that's a good obvious. point though. That's a good, really good it, point. It's a good point. And I've thought about it a lot. And yeah. my only, like, 
That's why I segue because your point about Giselle, it's like, why are we holding Giselle to a higher standard? Let's hold every woman on that franchise well, to a higher standard. I, I don't know that it's like a, the higher standard with, with that. I think a lot of people hated Giselle last season, so they just like now pick on they her. Just, yeah, they just go after her fashions because they yeah, can't stand because, Giselle. Well, I mean, it's so easy. Anyone yeah. that was Team Monique automatically hates Giselle, so that's the thing that they pick on. Um, but I think with the I agree the higher standard what I will say is like I think the hair pull by Danielle was expected because Danielle is just trashy right I think Monique it was like I think I didn't expect it of Monique expected but like it doesn't mean that she should be treated differently yeah but I think like it wasn't it wasn't like it felt more out of character from for Monique than it did for Danielle that's yeah but, and that but I I agree that it's a different standard they and it, it's sad because like it's obvious now and it's yeah. always it's been obvious but it's more obvious now and like I segue to that because of your comparison with Giselle it's like Teresa is equally as bad fashioned as Giselle Let's be honest. Teresa can't put an outfit together to save her life. Uh, none of the Jersey girls. Except none of them. Marge, I think, oh, would say the stop. word. J- Marge can, you know, she can put it together. It's for just Marge. Marge. It's, it's, just, it's just very Jersey. Yeah. Melissa Gorga needs to stop trying to wear MV to everything. It's not cute. <laughs> it's cheap. It's disgusting. I mean, Melissa, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. I was looking on a line at MV to shopping around to see what was, all the clothes look like, and everything's really overpriced. Um, thank you so much to our wonderful guest, Christopher James. We loved having you on for a second time. I'm sure there'll be many more to come. Um, Christopher, do you want to plug your Instagram or any other social channels? So my Instagram is, I don't even know my Instagram. That's how blonde I am. Jeez. Like the hair dye has just went to me. But it is for something. It's the real underscore Christopher underscore James, because you know, like the real Christopher James has has taken and we're here for that, but we're the original. Well, we loved having you and it's always so much fun talking all things Bravo with you. Well, thank you so much for having me and putting up with my antics. And yeah, hopefully I can be back having on. you on. Well, I'm sure there'll be a third time, so. Oof, third time's a charm now. 